Okay, here we are on module 43. And so this module is got only about four topics, but they are all word problems. So we're gonna work through them, um, but it's about half as long as all the other modules. So finding the initial amount and rate of change given an exponential function. Here's the example. Suppose that the dollar value V of T of a certain house that is T years old is given by the following exponential function. There it is. Find the initial value of the house. Ah, so the initial value is going to be, remember what the equation looks like. It looks like Y, or not Y. I think the old, this is an exponential, right? So it's A equals P1 plus R over N and T. Or you can just say Y equals A and then some number to the power T. Right, once you know what all these values are, that's going to give you a number. And then here they just use T, okay? There's no N because it looks like it's continuous. No, not necessarily. Continuous would have the E in it. So this is going to be your initial amount okay and b is going to be your rate however there's two things you need to know one is that if b is positive it's a growth rate and if b i'm sorry if it's greater than one not positive but greater than one if it's less than one then it's a decay okay so looking at this my initial value is going to be this number here which is five five nine nine zero zero and then my growth or decay is going to come from this number inside the parentheses so it is um, 0 0.79 and because it's less than zero, it's going to, I mean less than one, it's going to be a decay. So does the function represent a growth or decay? They don't even want the number, they just want to know growth or decay. So does the function represent growth or decay? It's decay because 0 0.79 is less than one. By what percent does the value of the house change each year? Well, I know that the rate is going to come from 0 0.79, but that's a decimal. If I want a percent, that's 79%. Now let's look at another um, topic. It's a writing an equation that models an exponential growth or decay. So the principal, this here, is $4,500 and was invested at 5.75 interest compounded annually. Let T be the number of years since the start of the investment. Let Y be the value of the investment in dollars. Write an exponential function showing the relationship between Y and T. You can use the old formula. It's compounded annually, not continuously. So you would use the same formula that you used before but then we're going to make it look like this at the end okay and so let's see a is what i don't know i do know my investment was forty five hundred dollars i do know that my rate is 0 0.0575 compounded annually means n is one and then one times t And then you're going to end up with 1.0575 inside the parentheses and T here. And the only thing left to do is instead of capital A here, they want you to write Y. And that's it. This is the equation that they wanted you to find. Okay, here it says finding the initial amount 
in a word problem on continuous interest. So continuous interest compounded continuously means I'm going to be using this formula. So let's see what they want. Mr. and Mrs. Bailey hope to send their son to college in 12 years. 12 years. So that means time is probably 12 years. How much money should they invest now? So I don't know what their investment is. That's what I'm trying to figure out. At an interest rate of 0 0.085 compounded continuously in order to be able to contribute $8,000 to his education. So that's the final amount that they hope to get. Round your answer to the nearest cent. So I'm gonna plug in 8,000 here. P, I don't know what it is. E to the 0 0.085 and T is 12. Now remember, this is all just a big number. Let me see. 0 0.085 times 12 is 1.02. This is a number. And if you have a number multiplied by your variable, how do you get rid of that number? You divide by that number. So this cancels and I have my variable all by itself. And on the right hand side, I just need to type that in my calculator. So I'm going to type 8,000 over E to the 1.02. And if I round that to the nearest cent, it's going to be 2884.76. So if they invest $2,800 or about $2,900 actually in 12 years, they should be able to uh, contribute 8,000 bucks. Okay, let's see this topic. It is the last topic in this section. It says the finding half time or doubling time. Um, the amount of money invested in a certain account increases according to the following function, where Y0 is the initial amount of the investment and Y is the amount present at time T. So after this one's the amount after some time. How many years will it take the initial investment to be doubled? Okay, I'm gonna do two problems here. I'm gonna do how many years will it take for the initial investment to double? Um, and then that's if it's a growth rate. If it's a growth rate, it'll have the word double. If it was a decay function, okay, then the rate up here would be negative and then they'd be asking you for half-life so i'm just gonna i'm gonna do this one but then i'm gonna set it up as if the word problem were a decay with a negative rate and then how you set it up to find the half-life okay because once you set it up all the rest of the steps are exactly the same so here it's a double so I don't know what my initial investment is, but I do know that the amount afterward is going to be twice, because of the word double, that initial amount. Okay, and then to solve for the term that the factor that has the variable in it, simply divide both sides by the coefficient there, and you get 2 equals e to the 0 0.055. And then you take the LN of both sides. And then the LNs would cancel. So you get LN of 2 equals 0 0.055t. Divide by the coefficient. And you get that t equals LN of 2 over 0 0.055 and it says round to the nearest tenth so about 12.6 years okay now had this been not a growth problem okay but let's say it had been a decay problem where they're talking about a radioactive substance or they're talking about um, some kind of population dying off something that's decreasing right as time goes by 
If they're talking about a decay function, the only difference between this function and my function is that the rate would be negative, okay? And if I'm asked to have find the half-life, instead of putting double this amount here, I would be putting half of that amount over there on that side. And then all the steps would still be the same. I'd still have to divide by that coefficient. If I put a half in a decimal form, it's 0 0.5. And then if I take the ln on both sides, oops, I forgot my t. Um, the ln and the e would cancel. And then I'd have to divide by that coefficient. And so then I'd have fraction, oops, fraction ln of 0 0.5 over negative 0 0.055, which means it would still take about 12.6 years. If it were a decay problem, it would still take about 12.6 years to decay. And again, that's because I took the same rate here, I just made it a decay instead of a growth. So coincidentally, the math still comes out to 12.6, okay? So make sure you're doing two times y sub zero for double, and you're using one half of y sub zero for half-life.